for our theme music. Every good hero. Let you have some. All right, New York Giants fans, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Keeping it light, keeping it funky today, a little homage to Big Pun. Uh, we got the Panther game coming up here on Saturday. Anyone going? Anyone going? Bueller? Bueller? Uh, I, I, I give credit to anyone that is going. <laughs> I, may, I, I might end up going. You never know. Because this is a game the Giants are probably going to win. It, it's what I like to refer to. You know, you have the trap game. I like to refer to these games as the false hope game. You got a team that's reeling in the Panthers with three losses. They just came off the overtime loss. Uh, their competition that they had played previously, the previous three games before that was not really at a high level. So this is the giant game that this is this could be a giant game where they get right for a day, give the team, give the fan base false hope, and they get blown out the next three weeks. It's it's probably what's gonna happen. So you know what? You gotta enjoy the win if we get it. But it's a game that the Giants have done this so many times in the past. And I'm not just talking about in the last 10 years. I'm talking about going back to the 70s, that they are a bad team. They beat a team that they probably should beat anyways. The fan base gets pumped up. We're 2-5. and five. We're going to the playoffs at 2-5. and five, And then we lose the next six games in a row. But you know what? It's neither the here nor there. Because today I want to talk about something. I want to talk about Malik Willis. And I think all Giants need to really start and get on board. All the board. The Malik Willis Express. If you are not on the, if this kid is not on your draft radar, uh, you may not follow college football a lot, of course, because he does play at Liberty. Uh, he was a transfer from Auburn, where people say, well, put it, well, he couldn't win the job at Auburn. He had to go to Liberty to play. Yeah, he did. But you know what? He is a kid that right now is rocketing up the draft charts. A lot of big boards have him going number one overall. I know pro football focus. <laughs> <laughs> pro football focus, pro football jokus, uh, has him going over number one overall. And then people will point out to the fact that he had a bad game uh, this last Saturday against, uh, which is a uh, Louisiana, what is it, Louisiana, Louisiana, Louisiana University Monroe, the Warhawks. They lost that game 31 28. He had a bad game 16 to 28, one touchdown, three interceptions, only completed 57% of his passes, was sacked four times. Um, but honestly, before then, he, he was he was in within the top 10 of all all you know, he was in the top 10 of passing for, for the entire nation. He, he just had a bad game and he actually had two bad games in a row. He, they did uh, beat the team uh, on the ninth. I can't remember who they played on the ninth. Who did the hell did they play on the ninth? Oh, they played middle and middle Tennessee State on the ninth. They beat them 41 13. He was 17 to 30 for 220 yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions, did rush for 80 yards and he did rush for uh, he did uh, rush for a touchdown. I did fail to point out in that loss against Louisiana. Um, he did rush the ball 23 times for 157 yards. He's a kid that plays above his ability, and that's what you want when you're, at, when you're at a smaller school. You want to play above your ability. You want to show that your talent level is greater than those you are playing against because you should have more talent because you were a blue-chip prospect. And people have gone to smaller schools and, and, and you know, exceeded and excelled in the NFL. This kid's got something about him. He, he, he's the it factor. Daniel Jones doesn't have the it factor. Malik Willis does. And that's why I always say you need to jump on board. All the board. The Malik Willis Express. Jump on the Express. Start looking at this kid and look at him seriously. He could be a game changer for the New York Giants. He is a guy that does not need a clean pocket. He's a guy that can move around. He is a scrambler. He is, he has a nice build at 6'1", 215 pounds. So more than likely he's more like, he's, he's the college six foot one. I loved it because I'm barely six, one and a half in college. I was six, three. <laughs> so there's the, I always love you have to go to college to learn how to not measure. <laughs> so, but, uh, but he, he is built, he's built like a little Michael Vick or he's actually built like Michael Vick and he's got a little that Vick in him. I mean, he's, he's got the moves, he's got the jukes, he's got the arm strength, he has the ability, his accuracy is somewhat in question, but there's, there's, there's a wow factor at him. He, he's a dual threat guy, and he's only, of course, had one full year starting experience, which was last year. He's going to have his second year in there. He can make plays with both, like I said, his arm, it's in his leg. He has a physicality about him, which I really think can hold up into the next level. I mean, he's, he's also tough. I mean, you look at him, he's just, he's just, he's just a tough, gritty ball carrier. And you're kind of surprised with a guy that's 6'1", 215, that, that has that grittiness. He also has the escapability in the pocket. He's, he's got no problem just winging it down the field. He's extremely athletic. 
He's fast. He's fast. And he's excellent in short bursts. And that's the problem with Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is a downhill runner. And it takes him to, time to beat and to build up speed. This kid can stop on a dime and give you nine cents change. He's phenomenal at changing the directions. I mean, he, he, he is, if you want to look up the definition of a college dual threat quarterback, it is Malik Willis. He's elusive as well, both inside the pocket and outside it. And he shows stellar vision. I mean, spectacular vision as a runner. And like I said, he is, and I've said it a million times, Daniel Jones is a point guard who can't create his own shot. This kid's Isaiah Thomas. This kid's Magic Johnson. He can create his own shot. And as soon as you fall in love with his ability as a runner, you then look at his arm. He's got a freaking cannon. He can get the ball down to all areas of the field. He does, he does a tendency. He has tremendous zip on the ball, but I will say this. He, can, he likes to try to fit the ball into tight windows, which gets him in trouble. And I think he trusts his arm a little too much, and why wouldn't you? But if he learns some touch and learns when he needs to put that extra zip on the ball, he's going to be even more dangerous. And he, he's kind of like a little bit of a Patrick Mahomes because he can throw the ball at multiple arm angles. Go back and watch the tape. He, it's, 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 it's interesting because, like I said, it's kind of like Holmes. He's, a, he's got like a sidearm. He's got an over the top. He's got, a sh- he's got a shovel pass. He's got it all. Now, you sit there and you think, okay, big arm, great legs. Ability to run seems to have the the strength and the wherewithal to put up with the rigors. He's an entertaining talent, but I will tell you this, and everyone always goes to me, there's always a but because you're so negative. No, it's nothing to do with being negative. I give both sides of the option. He needs to improve on his decision making. And 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 that's and I think that's with all quarterbacks. And I've said it before, he, he tries to make throws that he probably shouldn't make. He makes some, very, he makes some ill-advised throws. And I've said it before, he, he attempts to put too much zip on the ball to fit things into tighter windows and throw into double coverage. That's questionable. But then the question is, is he doing that because of the fact that he has a lack of talent around him and the lack of a supporting cast that he feels like he has to do that to try to make the big play? It's a possibility. He took too many sacks last year. And at times, he, he tried to escape the pocket instead of allowing the play to fully develop, which is fine, which is, again, this is, these are things that can be worked on. These are things that can be taught. Now, for all of his arm strength, there are, you know, like I said, he's, he needs to improve on his accuracy. It's kinda, it it kind of reminds you of Josh Allen. He has some overthrows. He has some underthrows. He, he, he'll have some throws that land a little wide off the mark. He'll miss some of the short passes. But it's, again, this is something that will, that, that's, that's something that will come about and be, it can be taught in the pros. Now, he only threw six interceptions last year. He's got six interceptions now. Uh, he will suffer. <laughs> People will be like, oh, no, it's Daniel Jones with fumbles. Uh, because he doesn't secure the ball. He, he's not securing the ball properly. But he's kind of already, he's kind of, he's kind of just still developing his own running style. And once you develop your own running style, then you will be more consistent with ball security. And, and I think that's the way you got to look at it. He, he is, he is, is he a raw prospect? Sure. He's a raw prospect. Is he a kid that can, can really add something to an offense? And can he play his rookie season? I think he can. I really think he can. He's a kid from the ATL. He went to high school over at Westlake, and that, that, is a, that is a good football school. He showed dual threat, you know, both in high school, and even he was a multi-sport athlete, played baseball. I don't know if he still plays baseball in college, but he played baseball in, um, in what you call it, in, uh, in high school. I mean, he's just a guy that's got the sp- – he's, he's an athlete, but he's an athlete who, in my mind, can play quarterback. He is an athlete – that will allow him to really progress if he's coached properly in the NFL. And I think if you build a scheme around him and you build it in a way that will allow him to showcase his talents, it's going to be, it's going to be nothing. It's going to be nothing but phenomenal. He'll have his growing pains. He'll have his issues, 
he'll have some problems, you know, making certain plays. But like I said, I believe he has, and you know, and what he has gone through from Auburn to Liberty and everything else, he looks like he has the mental fortitude that you want in a pro athlete. And like I mentioned, he has the toughness. He can throw the ball in the pocket, outside the pocket. He can create with his running ability. I would like to see him hang out in the pocket a little bit more to let plays develop. But again, that's something that can be taught. Big arm, big legs, big talent. All Giant fans need to. All aboard the Malik Willis Express. Get on the Express now. Get the train rolling. We got to get this done. We, we, it, it's not that I'm saying, you know, I am saying get rid of Daniel Jones. It's time. It's time to do something different with this organization. It really is. It's time to move. It's time to move in a different direction with a different GM, a different coach, a different style, a different philosophy. Let's, let's, turn the, let's turn the Giants into something different. Yes, defense, ground and pound wins championships, but sometimes you need to electrify your fan base. You need, to, you need to have the fans talking about something. And I tell you right now, Malik Willis is a kid that if you've ever seen interviews with him, go watch on YouTube. If you've ever seen him play, he brings excitement. He brings passion. He, he looks like he's got the total package. Yeah, it's at liberty, but like I said, you rise above and play above your talent. That's what I want to see when you're playing at a small school. And I'm telling you right now, man, I, I, I have, I've been excited about certain draft prospects. I, I, was, I was excited about, about Josh Allen. I said the same thing to everyone else. I think he's going to be a great pro, but I think his accuracy is going to need to be worked on. It's kind, of, it's kind of a parallel to Malik Willis, but I think Malik Willis has more of a creative ability in the pocket and outside the pocket than Josh Allen, and it's something Giants fans would crave after three years of Daniel Jones. And that's all for today, guys. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue reminding you to like, subscribe, and do all that fun stuff. And again, once again, that's my theme music. And every good hero should have some.